This is the notes for section 10.7, Law of Signs. If you haven't done so already, make sure you pause the video at this time and read section 10.7 before continuing on with this video. So, um, using trigonometry to find all the missing measures of sides and angles is something that we do quite a bit. And, and that, that idea is called solving the triangle. Okay. And over the next couple sections here, we're going to we're going to work on some skills or some different different ways that we can go about actually doing that solving triangles, okay? So to begin with, let's take a look at um, solutions to the cosine of theta equals k, all right? When when theta is between 0 and 180 degrees. Well, the reason why I'm looking at it between 0 and 180 degrees is because if I look at any triangle, it doesn't matter what it is, um, any, any angle measure must be some angle somewhere between 0 and 180 degrees because I know if I add up all three angles within that triangle, they have to add up to 180 degrees. Okay? So if we look at the graph of the cosine of theta between 0 and 180 degrees, which is the red part of this graph here, You'll notice that if I draw any horizontal line between that graph, it's going to only intersect the graph in one place. Okay? And what that tells me is that there will always be, for any value of theta between 0 and 180 degrees, there will always be just one unique solution uh, to that equation. So it doesn't matter what the value of k is, if theta is between 0 and 180 degrees, there's going to be only one solution to that. So if I look at this uh, little question here, it says solve the cosine of theta equals negative 1 half when theta is between 0 and 180 degrees using the inverse cosine function. So if I take the inverse cosine of the cosine of theta equals the inverse cosine of negative 1 half, I know this stuff cancels out and I'm left with just theta. So I'm looking at the inverse cosine of negative 1 half. And if I do that, I can do that on my calculator, or I can think about my exact values. We will find that that value is 120 degrees. Okay. So if, if 120 degrees is theta, there's only one value. There's only one place in the graph where it's going to be equal to negative um, 1 half on that cosine graph. Okay, so that would be my only possible answer. So now let's look at the same thing when I look at the sine of theta equals k between 0 and 180 degrees with that same idea that, hey, a triangle has to have an angle somewhere between 0 and 180 degrees. Now the problem with the sine of theta is if, if I look at that graph from 0 to 180 degrees, you'll notice that if I draw a horizontal line through that graph, it's going to actually intersect the graph in two places. Okay? Um, and we find that, that um, the graph y equals k will intersect it in two places. Therefore, there are two solutions to the sine of theta equals k. Okay? Well, there's going to be one solution that's in the first quadrant, somewhere between 0 and 90 degrees, and one solution between 90 and 180 degrees. So one in the first quadrant and one in the second quadrant, which leads to what we call the supplements theorem. And the supplements theorem just says that if I have any measure, any degree, uh, any, any value for theta, the sine of theta will be equal to the sine of 180 minus theta. Okay, So for, that occurs for all values of theta. So before continuing on, you might want to just take a few minutes to reread example number one on page 701. This next one is a very similar problem to that, and just to kind of refresh your memory as to how they did that in the book, so you can kind of see how we're going to walk through it here uh, in your notes. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at example one here then. It says find all solutions to the sine of theta equals 0.528 from the interval of 0 to 180 degrees. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the inverse sine. If I take the inverse sine of both sides, then the left-hand side will be theta, which is what I'm looking for, and the right-hand side is 
the inverse sine of 0.528. Okay, so that's what I'm going to go and put into my calculator. Now let's take a look at what we get when we do that. So when I do that, you'll notice that I come up with about 31 point, we'll round that off to the nearest tenth, so to about 31.9 degrees. Now remember, if, you, if you're trying to get the inverse sign, if you're having trouble with that on the black calculator, uh, it's just you go to the trig key and then go down and select inverse sign there. Okay. Now, 31.9 is what the value that our calculator gave us, but we know from what we just talked about that there are two values between 0 and 180 degrees in which the sine of theta would be equal to some number. So what we want to do is we want to think about what that other one is going to be, and we're going to use the supplements theorem to come up with that. So if, if one of them is at 31.9, to find the other one I'm going to take 180 minus 31.9 because according to our supplements theorem, those two must be the same. So the other possible angle would be 148.1 degrees. Okay, if you could pause the video then for a little bit, and I'd like you to see if you can do this quiz yourself, number two. See if you can come up with an answer for both part A and part B, and when you turn the video back on, I'll have the answers up here for you. Okay, so if we look at the answers then, for part A, there's no solutions, because if you think about the graph of that, which we have here, Notice how here, w this would be at about negative one-half. Notice how there's not going to be anything occurring there because in the first and second quadrant, we know that the sine value is going to be a positive value. So it doesn't mean there aren't values. There are values. In fact, if you do go to your calculator and you do the inverse sine, you'll notice that of negative one half, you'll notice that you get negative 30. It's just that there aren't any values between 0 and 180 degrees there. If I look at part B of that, I can use the inverse sine, or I can use what I know about exact values. I know the sine of 30 degrees is one half, therefore theta would have to be 30 degrees in the first quadrant, but then it would also have to be 150 degrees in the second quadrant. All right, next I'd like to take a look at some tricks that we can use to solve triangles. Remember, solving triangles is using trigonometry to find all of its sides and all of its angles. Well, the first trick that we're going to look at is what we call the law of sines. And the law of sines is the following. If I look at the ratio between the sine of an angle and the side opposite it, so if this is angle A, then this side over here would be opposite that angle. If this is angle C, side C would be opposite, etc. So if I look at that ratio, it will be the same for all angles and sides of any triangle. So the sine of A over A is the same as the sine of B over B is the same as sine of C over C. So if I know um, you know, any three of the four of those things, by, by meaning that you can, you can look at the ratio between sine A over A and sine B over B, if I know three of the four of those, I can find the other one, okay? So that's what we're going to use. Now, the law of sines, if you, if you can think back to um, in geometry when, we, when you're looking at your triangle congruences, the law of sines works for these two triangle congruences, AAS -A -A and ASA. So anytime you have a situation where you knew, you know two of the two of the angles, and you know um, the the side outside those two angles or the side between those two angles, you can use law of sines to to complete the triangle. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at example two here. It says, suppose the stations S and T are 18 miles apart. And we're looking and we're, we're referring to example two from the book as well here. So it says, suppose st stations S and T are 18 miles apart and the ranger S sees a fire at an angle of 42 degrees uh, with ST, with that, with that ray. And the ranger at T sees a fire at 74 degrees with TS. 
find the distance from station T to the fire. Okay, so we have a drawing over here of that situation. So here's here's station S. Here's the 42 degrees that it makes to the fire up here. Here's the 74 degrees from station T to the fire. We want to know what that distance is. Now, if you look at the information that we have, I have an angle, I have a side, and I have an angle. So this is a good example of one where we can use law of sines to find that, that length that we're missing, that x length. Okay, So I'm going to set up a ratio um, comparing uh, sides and, and angles opposite them. So I'm going to say the sine of 42 over x is equal to, well, I know that um, I, although I don't know what this angle is, I can find it because this one's 74 and this one's 42. So I can subtract those from 180 to get the measure of angle F. So that would be 64 degrees here. So the reason why I'm picking that angle instead of 74 is because I have the side opposite that that angle F. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to say that's equal to the sine of 64 over 18. And now I have a ratio set up where I only have one missing piece and I can go ahead and solve for X. And the way I do that is by using means extremes. So I could cross multiply. So I could say 18 times the sine of 42 is equal to x times the sine of 64. And then if I divide by the sine of 64 on both sides, this stuff cancels out. So this right here is what I'm going to enter into my calculator to find what x is. So I've entered that into my calculator. Now I want to get an approximate distance, so I'm going to hit Control Enter on that. If I do that, I get about 13.4. Therefore, the distance that I'm looking for from station T to F is about 13.4 miles. All right, this is example number three. It says in triangle TRI, the measure angle R is 23 degrees, I is 72 degrees, and R, the side opposite angle R, would have to be 13. And then it says find T, where T would be this side opposite of um, angle T, so this side right here. Um, now, if this is 25 and this is 72, this angle here would have to be 83 degrees. So to set this up, I'm going to say the sine of 25 over 13, side opposite it, would have to be equal to the sine of 83. And the reason why I'm picking the sine of 83 is because I'm, I, I need to find the side opposite it. So I'm, is equal to t. Okay. So if I have that, I can cross multiply and solve. So I can say t is equal to 13 times the sine of 83 divided by the sine of 25. Okay. So what I've done is I, I, I've done a little bit of, uh, of quick work here. I brought, with means extremes, remember we can, we can interchange anything across this way. So I brought the 13 up over here. I brought the t up over to this side, and I brought the sine of 25 down to the other side. Now, you could do that in two steps and get the exact same thing, but this is what I'm going to enter into my calculator, which should give me something pretty close to about 30.53. Therefore, that would be the length of that side t, or ri. Okay.